So last year we had placed a bed of sunflowers alongside our pool and we want to do the same thing this year. Um, we learned some things last year. One is that you have to water the sunflowers uh, because we had a very dry season and they died pretty much mid-August. This is where we're gonna put it this year and I'm gonna go ahead and till this up again. We do have a lot of weeds growing here and to be honest I don't really care. Uh, it doesn't matter. I am going to expand it out a little bit more. Last year when I would mow, I'd have to try and go around that those poles up there. And that made it very difficult uh, with my zero turn to get around this. I typically mow the yard with my zero turn. And I mow the edge of my yard with my tractor. And I do some of the rougher areas with my tractor as well. But uh, so we're going to expand into this area and do the best that we can to get this all cleaned up and get it ready to plant. Um, we have a dip right here that I'm going to try and backfill with some horse manure that my brother-in-law has and then we'll go ahead till it up and get it ready to plant. As much as I love using the grapple it's not going to do a very good job of hauling manure for very long distances. So the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the grapple from the loader boom by uh, removing the linchpins on each side of the grapple. I'll then lower the grapple to the ground and push out on the uh, joystick for the dump function and then I'll back away from the grapple so that I can disconnect the hoses. Once I relieve the pressure off the loader by jiggling the joystick, I'll disconnect the hoses uh, from the uh, grapple go ahead and put them together so that they are not uh, getting dirty while it's off the tractor and then I'm going to put the dust covers back onto the tractor. In this case the dust covers were pretty dirty so you want to make sure they're wiped off and clean before you go ahead and put them back over the male and female ends of the hose kit that's coming down the boom to the grapple. Once I have the uh, grapple removed I'm going to put it away and come back up to the loader with my carrier extended and I'm doing a really good job of getting this back on. Uh, once I have it I'm going to curl it back in and now I'm going to reinstall the linch pins on each side of the, the uh, bucket. That has to be the worst demo of putting the bucket back on ever. So this is what I got to go through. The back pile is the one that we need to get the manure from. The front pile is more bedding uh, for the horses. And between me, where we're standing, and the back pile is a lake. So we're going to have to drive through this. Um, most of this is sand out here where we live, but I know for the paddock that he used to have, uh, we pretty much, he used clay. And I would have loved to show you the first dramatic track across the pond, not knowing if I was going to get stuck or not. Uh, but unfortunately, I forgot to turn my camera on. And you might have noticed that I had the flu when I was filming this. Uh, it was the day before Easter, it was nice outside, and I was getting a, a really bad case of the flu. And you're going to hear quite a bit of sniffles and things during the video of this, so bear with me that it wasn't my best day of filming. So a lot of people ask how much can the loader hold? Well this is a full load of horse manure and as you can see the bucket is completely full on one scoop. And this particular load is pretty significant because we had a lot of rain over the last week and that's why there's standing water out in the sandy field. And this one was really heavy. Uh, so. I had the tractor ballasted properly, I had the backhoe on the back of it, and really going across the field there wasn't any issues, I, I uh, looked, kept checking my tires on the front, there was no issues with those as well. So that's one of the nice things about having the backhoe on the back of the tractor. If I didn't have the backhoe I would have used a ballast box and filled it up with uh, either dirt or a rock. And you can see that I have a long way to take this load, I got across the highway. And, uh, and then once I get into the backyard, I have a couple hundred more yards to go until I reach my destination.
red deer tractor for sale if anybody wants it now i'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that are going to ask the question why are you hauling the manure such long distances uh, back and forth wouldn't it be easier to get a trailer and take care of it and the honest truth is i've done it both ways i've got out got the trailer loaded it up uh, brought it back over unloaded it and uh and then I have to move the tractor, hook up the trailer to the Jeep, bring the Jeep over, take that, take it apart. By the end of the day, it's pretty much about the same time. So being that's so nice out, I decided to just go ahead and do it this way. Okay. There are times that I'm gonna wanna get things done quicker. Um, this just isn't one of those days. There isn't a whole lot going on uh, that I have to do other than this project. So to me, it was a perfect way to spend the day before Easter. And there's that dramatic shot of me crossing the pond. It actually wasn't that big of a deal uh, because the uh, pond wasn't as deep as I thought it was going to be when I first looked at it. The nice thing I, about this tractor is I can push into a pile and uh, get a full load. And you can see it right here. I'm just lifting that right up with no issues at all. The John Deere bucket is a larger bucket than the competition. Most of them are 48. This is 53. It has a deeper capacity. Uh, this one is a much larger bucket and it will fill up and overflow most of our competitor buckets. And you can see that it has no issues handling uh, this load at all. I have hauled pretty much most materials that you can think of, uh, starting from the very heaviest wet sand to uh, crushed concrete, river stone, uh, mulch, uh, going with uh, clay topsoil and I've never had an issue with the tractor handling those and people always ask well how much can the tractor lift and the answer is it will lift a full bucket load at any time. We've had plenty of projects that we've done over the years bringing in large amounts of material uh, that needed to be spread and for example behind you on the left hand side there there's a small barn 24 by 24 and the base of that barn has six inches of crushed concrete and then it also has a crushed concrete driveway all the way around it and I brought in 25 yards and had that spread out pretty much in one morning's time. A lot of people argue that having a bigger tractor would have allowed me to get the job done in half the time and that might be true if I'm spreading the rock in wide open places but if you notice those barn doors behind me those are eight feet high by eight feet wide and I wouldn't have been able to get a lot of tractors into that, uh, those stalls that also are eight by eight as you go into the barn. So with this tractor, I was able to come into the barn, make a quick turn, and I was able to dump the rock and actually spread it out uh, between the stalls that are sitting inside the barn doors there. So having a larger tractor is not always the answer. And in a lot of cases, as I talked about in my previous video, you're going to find situations where you won't be able to use a large tractor and that's a prime example of one of the, the areas that I had concerns about when I purchased this tractor. The other part about this tractor that people underestimate is its ability to drive into a pile and pick up uh, a full load and I have some other videos that I've been doing over the past year reviews some competitive tractors at the same RPM and they were not able to do what this tractor is doing right now. And I'm going to show those. I'm kind of hesitant to show those right now because I know that there's going to be a lot of people out there that are going to respond negatively. Uh, but the videos are what they are. Uh, this tractor does a great job of getting into piles, lifting full loads. You just watch me do it there. Um, you just got to make sure you're in low gear and that you're in four wheel drive as you enter into a pile. This is the Frontier RT 3049. It is a forward tine tiller. I live on very light sandy loam soil and the forward tine tiller is perfect for it. Uh, it does a good job of tilling up weeds, getting things out of the way. And at the same time, you're going to um, be able to plant pretty much after you till. There is a reverse tine tiller out there, which is the RT 3049R. And typically I would recommend this for people that have really heavy soil uh, because it uses the direction of the tractor and the, the uh, tines turn in the opposite direction, which makes it a little bit easier 
to go through hard, heavy soil, but it does leave the uh, soil much clumpier once you're done tilling. In my opinion, for the money, the RT3049 is one of the top of the line tillers out there. It is a gear drive tiller and not a chain drive tiller. He used to have the RT11 line of tillers that were all chain drives. And this tiller is also very heavy, uh, weighing about 68% more than the old RT1149 uh, brand that we used to have. This tiller weighs 540 pounds, so when you're out there comparing side by side, make sure you look at the overall weight of the unit that you're looking at. I've both looked at and taken in on trade some of the other tillers out there, Land Pride in particular, I've taken in several of those, and Rural King, King Cutter, uh, and every one of them doesn't stack up to this particular tiller. Most tillers have either a 90 day warranty um, or possibly a year warranty. This one has a year warranty on the entire tiller and a three year warranty on the gearbox. It comes standard with the slip clutch, which is very important not to have the shear bolts. And you're gonna see as I start to till here that we're gonna hit some pretty rough things here and the, the tiller's gonna kind of work right through it uh, without busting. So as I get started, you're gonna notice that the tiller is just above the ground. I don't wanna start it all the way up in the air. I just wanna have it just above the ground and I lower it down lightly into the soil and I let it work its way into the ground. Unfortunately, the chain came off the drive shaft guard and that's what you see spinning there. Um, you definitely don't want that situation to happen. The guard is designed to stay in place so that you don't uh, get your clothing caught on it and get dragged into the tiller uh, while it's uh, moving. This was not my best day of filming because in addition, I left the PTO drive shaft hanger in place, which I needed to remove that. And you can see on the right hand side of the tiller that the stand for the tiller is still down. All things that I catch at the end of this run, but anyway, it was a very good day of filming. I definitely was not feeling well this day. And as I come to the end of the run, you're gonna hear me saying things that hopefully you aren't able to make out exactly what I'm saying because I can tell you that I was not extremely happy on that like afternoon. That on. And as I get things together, ever the consummate professional, I am back into the tilling. By the way, this field is your bargain basement sunflower field. I can tell you I didn't put a lot of money into it. I didn't go out and buy chemicals to treat the weeds and kill the grass and then go over it all. All I'm doing at this point is tilling up the ground and then later I'm going to go out and buy a $29 bag of sunflower feed for birds and then I'm going to plant it. Last year we used the black oil sunflower seeds and they came out pretty well. Um, they, they were blooming by about late July and then they died about mid-August because uh, it was really dry last summer and we really didn't water them. Um, we had some things going on. And this year, we're planting them earlier. I think last year I planted them in June, and this year we're gonna plant them by mid-April. I spoke to a farmer who runs the sunflower uh, field patch where you can go get pictures taken out in the field. And essentially, this is exactly what he does with his field every single year. The other issue I think I had last summer was I planted way too many sunflower seeds in a very short little area. And I think that actually kind of contributed to them choking each other out and they weren't really able to grow and expand. So this year, I'm gonna be using less sunflower seeds and I will have the full video of how I'm going to plant those. Uh, right now, we're just preparing the bed for the planting. Years ago, this land was an old Belgian picnic grounds and you can see they had an old pump well there and that little bit of concrete that I'm driving over right now was actually a pad for a grill. Uh, they had three grills, one for doing a hog roast, another one for corn, and then they also had a, another grill for like hamburgers, hot dogs, and that type of thing. Unfortunately, during the 70s, the park closed, and consequently, there was a lot of, those grills were torn apart through vandalism, and a lot of the stones from the grill, a lot of the bricks are actually in the ground there. And in addition, where I'm driving right now used to be a road that uh, people used to access the picnic grounds from. So there is about six inches of pea gravel under the soil that's here. Now last year I brought in a whole bunch of uh, 
horse manure and I spread it out and then this year I expanded a little bit more so we've always kind of struggled to grow things in this area and I think the biggest reason why is because of that pea gravel uh, road that's underneath this uh, topsoil here so this summer I'm going to be keeping track and posting videos of how well the sunflower field is doing and just kind of monitor the progress and hopefully I'll get a full summer out of this uh, field and you can see what a good job this tiller is doing of uh, smoothing everything out. I didn't really level out that uh, horse manure and it did a good job of that. Um, this wasn't my best day of filming. Uh, my GoPro camera broke. My other camera that I had is no longer working. So over the course of the, my filming the last month, uh, I've lost my drone, I've lost my GoPro. And uh, right now I'm trying to get everything situated for the returning out to the land clearing series and with the sound of sniffling going on in the background we're going to be calling it a day for today i accomplished everything i wanted to today which was the very first uh, establishment of the bigger bed we're going to be bringing in some more horse manure where i know last year the flowers didn't grow very well and in addition i'm going to be digging out those rocks and bricks up by that concrete pad so that I can get some more uh, dirt around that pad at this point. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked the video, please hit that like and subscribe button. Please share it with others as well. Next time we're gonna be planting the sunflower seeds and we're gonna be digging out these rocks in front of this pad right here. So for today, I'm Phil Dance and I sell John Deere tractors.